What is up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter. So good to have you in my studio today. I have such an exciting video for you guys today. I am pumped. I am excited about this video. So what is this video? We have a bunch of stuff. So as you know, we've had a sponsor for a while, Mako Colors. And so shout out to Mako for all the sweet glazes they've been, they've been giving us. We've been using their glazes for a while now. But this video is dedicated to some other products of theirs, ways to enhance your current glazes to make your pottery better. So what did they send us? Let's check it out. Check out the unboxing of what they sent us right now. We got these sweet mats from them, which one is like a honeycomb and one is the wood grain. So the Minnesota has the wood grain on there. And then this is the honeycomb one. These you just stamp on there and they make really cool textures. They have a bunch of them. And then they sent me some brushes because they were noticing that I was using brushes that I got like from the hardware store. And evidently there's brushes that are made for artists and ceramic people. So I was using those and those have been awesome. The last thing they sent me were these washes. And so what these washes are, are just like glaze enhancements, ways to make your glazes a little bit better. So you use them a little bit differently than like the dipping glazes. So this is what it looks like underneath sandstone. I kind of went back and forth with Mako a little bit about, so how do I use these washes? I couldn't really quite understand, but they turned out like the first try was really cool. So. Basically, what do we got here? The iron wash is right there. The rutile wash, and we have the cobalt wash, the manganese wash, copper wash. So basically what happened was I applied these washes with these sweet brushes. So I just painted it around the edge and then I dipped the sandstone over top. So this is like basically ways to just enhance your glazes. It's kind of like using two different combinations of glazes one on top of the other. I also learned that they kind of have a difference in how they make the glaze flow too. Like these, I, I numbered them one through five. And so one, these glazes stay more where they are and then to five where you can see it starts to run more. That's what we're gonna do today. That's what this video is. I have all these test pieces. So we have a planter, a cup, a mug, a mug, two mugs, one with each of those. We have a marbled one. We're just gonna do something around the rim. Another mug, mug, cup, like a marbly, marbly cup, and another mug. So we're gonna use some of these washes, and like the possibilities are literally endless. I mean, you can use the washes underneath glazes, you can use the washes over top of glazes. You could do a combination of two, like some of the ones that I really like. Like the, you know, this is like sandstone underneath Norse blue. So we could like put you know, a thin layer of the copper wash and then dip all Norse blue and then dip sandstone. And that would probably do something cool. So like my mind is just exploding with the possibilities of these. We're just gonna have fun with these washes, do some different stuff. We'll write them down so that we know, so I can share with you, which I don't always write things down. Which you definitely should do, but I don't always do, but you definitely should, and I should. And then we're gonna load them in the kiln and then we're gonna unload them. So you can see. So this is probably gonna be a super long video, but I'm just gonna boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna film everything, and then I'm gonna smash it together in a sweet edit for you guys. Shout out to the sponsor, Mako. Mako products, you guys make some amazing ceramic products. Thanks for everything you do for me and for ceramic community in general. You guys ready for this? You ready?
got, this is kind of a complicated project to test all these washes, but I'm working on it. So I got each of the washes underneath Norse Blue here. Now we got each of the washes underneath Aurora Green. And I think I'll add a little sandstone to the rim of um, all of them, just to kind of see what that three layers looks like. And then I think we're gonna do one more set of five things with the blue surf. And then a couple of the sandstone. And then we just gotta glaze a bunch of other stuff so we can fill this kiln up. We got all this we can glaze. And then we got all this we can glaze. All right, friends, so we got everything. We got all the washes. We got them all shot and filmed and so we can go back and look and make sure that we uh, know what we're doing because that's a really important part. Really important part of glazing is knowing because you, you think you'll remember everything. Take it from me. I should listen to this. I should, future John should listen to past John and vice versa. Hmm, how, anyway, the point is that you gotta write stuff down because you think you'll put it in the kiln and it'll come back out and you'll remember what it is, but more often than not, you don't. And that's how you really learn, is you keep track of stuff. So we're keeping track on the camera, on our phone, taking pictures, so anyway. And then loading it all in the kiln, and then we will see you in a couple days when it comes out. I'm super pumped to see all these washes, all the new stuff. Turns out, having nice artistic brushes is super nice, so. Thank you guys. All right, see you in a couple days. All right, friends, so it's been two days. Two days? It's been two days. It's been two days since this kiln was fired. It's less than 100 degrees. We are ready to unload it. I'm so pumped. You saw me glaze a bunch of the stuff, but you also didn't see me glaze a few things, which I am excited to share. Oh yeah, and in the meantime, we built some shelves. Check that out. Check out all the sweet pots. So those are, uh, we're getting ready to do another Etsy restock. So hopefully sometime this week, we'll be doing an Etsy restock. Pay attention to uh, patrons on Patreon are gonna hear about it first. And then uh, after that, I will tell the YouTube channel and the Instagram and all that stuff. Get pumped, this is the best part. If you're not a potter, then you probably don't quite understand how exciting it is. Like the whole process is so long and now we finally get to see. All right, so I think I'm gonna take a page out of the Earth Nation Ceramics, who is another pottery YouTuber. And I'm just gonna unload everything, just do a little time lapse, and then I'm gonna talk about, because I think it'll be kind of confusing if I talk about each thing as it comes out, but if I can like unload it and then group it all together, that'll be, that'll be simpler. So, all right, let's set up the camera. <laughs> Couple things that were really cool. This is one of those washes. I'll, I'll put it in down here and what it looked like before, but that's one of the washes below Blue Surf. So these are all, you know, all five of those washes. So I can tell that this one is like the Rutile wash underneath Blue Surf, which actually turned out pretty cool. And then I don't know which one this is, but it was something. Yeah, the Norse Blue, this must be the ones that don't really run at all, same with this one. I know this is one, I can't really remember which one it is, but that actually turned out very interesting. I'm excited to see which one that is because it's really cool. This one too, they all kind of have like a little metallic-y look to them so far, is what I've seen. Oh, the other things that turned out really good from these Mako tools were the honeycomb mat. So there's just like a black gloss glaze inside of that. And then the wood grain one too. That one turned out really cool. And this one, these have the washes underneath as well. Ooh, and this one is like, look at that down there. That's really cool. A Couple other cool things that came out of this. Some marbled colored clay. I'm working on, I'm working on getting a video done about that for you guys. And then 
some of this stuff came out pretty cool. Like that's awesome. Similar one here. Overall, it was a good fire. I learned a lot about those washes. Great brushes. Um, the, it's the, the washes are a, kind of a tough thing because you can put them under things, you can put them over things. You can put one glaze on top, you can put two glazes on top, you can put three glazes on top. So I'm still kind of learning about how to best use those. Uh, if any of you guys have any experience, I'd love to hear it in the comments below with any Mako washes, brushes, colors, combinations, anything that tickles your fancy. Lot of different options, lot of options. Look at that marble in there though. That's pretty cool. That's just a red iron oxide clay or colorant. Super fun, super fun to try some new stuff. Get this out, see how it went. Shout out to Mako, sponsor of this video. Thank you guys so much for sending us all this stuff, having us test it out. Love the brushes, love those stamps in the clay for the honey and uh, those washes are, I can tell we, there's lots of cool stuff that can be done with those. I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys all so much for subscribing. We just went over 50,000 subscribers. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? But super, super fun. So thank you guys all so much for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Check out the Patreon account if you wanna get subject to extra John the Potter stuff. And we're gonna do an Etsy restock where we kinda just like tell the patrons first uh, and then with some of this stuff over here. So I can't say thank you guys enough. We'll see you guys in the next video. Sing out your frustration